Kia ora Anaru here for Combat Sports New Zealand. I've just finished uh, my interview with Kieran the Stone Carter Joblin. Uh, it was it was a good interview where we, we caught him in the bathtub halfway through his weight cut. Um, so we got a bit of insight onto onto how he's cutting his weight, finishing up his weight cut, ready for his fight on XFC 27 on Saturday. Um, he's also preparing to defend his lightweight title at Carnage in the Cage. Um, a couple of weeks after this, so we so we talk about the preparation of keeping him uh, fight fit, you know, with with two fights in, in, in under a month. Um, we got his predictions on the next UFC. We got his got his take on UFC 202. We got his take on UFC money and how he would spend that money once he gets there and he and he starts making it. Um, shout outs to Kieran and and all his team. At Strike Force and Canterbury Fight Centre. Uh, thanks for your time, Karen, and I hope everyone enjoys the interview. Cheers. Ready? All right, bro. Cheers for <laughs> cheers for uh, joining me, man. What what are you doing in that bath, bro? Yeah, bro. I just smashed out uh, my uh, my bath cut. So ten minutes in the bath of salt and rubbing alcohol. Yeah. And then uh, wrap up, and twenty minutes wrapped up with tutu and towel and warm clothes. So what I'm doing there is. Um, my body temp got up, so I'm sweating, and then you wrap up so your body's not getting any energy when you're lying there and maintaining a good sweat to get the weight out without any stress on your body. Okay, okay. How does the uh, salts work, and how does the bath, does that pulling out the, the water, um, or are you, are you sweating it out? Yeah, bro, I think this, some people say it works and doesn't, but the salt pulls and pull the, it's good for your muscles anyway, because you pop salt in the training, it pulls the water out of your Muscles and the hot water gets your body temp up, so you're sweating, and then that's all the bath really does. It's nice in the sauna because you're not really cooking your insides, you're just um, heating your body up and then pulling the water out of your muscles instead of the important places. Okay, okay. Um, how does that? How do you start that process? So you, like, uh, do you start that uh, a week ago? Do you do you cut down on the carbs and, and food and stuff, or or, is, or are you just like drinking lots of water? How how do you start the the weight? Cut process. Yeah, bro. So I'm always eating pretty clean. Like have have my weekends off and enjoy what I want. But uh, and then I got a fight book. Then I eat clean. I eat my carbs before training and um, lots of fat and veggies to keep the nutrients and the testosterone up naturally without needing any of the other stuff. <laughs> the dick pills. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And just eat, eat good, bro. Drink lots of water. Um, get lots of sleep. That's the most important thing. Eh, is getting a good night's sleep because otherwise you. Your heart rate's tough, and you next day you go to work feeling like shit, and you train like shit, and you just feel like shit. So, yeah, yeah. Sleep and nutrition are the most important things there. Eh? True. Fight. True. So, um, are you close to weight now? Do you have much more weight to cut tomorrow, or or is it all business? Like you, you'll be flying to Brizzy tomorrow for your fight. Yeah, bro, I fly at first thing. So hopefully, if I float a kilo overnight, I'll have um under a kilo to go tomorrow. So it'll be like seven hundred grams or something, nice and easy. Nice. nice white cut and be on the money. Cool. And do they have um like what's the facilities like when you get there? Is there is there a sauna there, or are you gonna do another bath cut? Hopefully, uh, have a bath cut, have a bath there to put, uh, do the cut. Otherwise, I, I think they got a sauna for us. Or yeah. Hopefully, it's a hot day like mid twenties, and I can chuck on the sweat suit and just go for a jog around the block and yeah, get a sauna on and leave like that. Well, you you'll be fighting at um, XFC 27, uh, which is in Brisbane. Yeah. So I'm I'm expecting it'll be pretty hot. You might be able to have a job. Um, yeah, I'm in the right now. I'm in the box twice and I make weights, so it's it's nice way better than cutting weight at home. Too cold here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, what what's his, uh, your opponent? What's your opponent's name? You're fighting on uh, Saturday. Uh, Ethan Ethan Dunningham, he's the the Minotaur lightweight Aussie champ. It's like a, a Melbourne show, so uh, he's a good up and coming fighter with some some good striking and some good jujitsu. So um, yeah, yeah, he's going to be a, a tough fight. Like I got the experience on him for sure, but um, I've been that guy that was coming up and taking on the big Aussies and knocking them over. So um, I know how it feels to be in his shoes. So um, trying to keep my head down as the experienced guy and get the job done quick. And not let him get a, not let him get in the fight. Like put my experience on him and make him break quick. Yeah, yeah, he'll be gunning for for a win against you and 
and try and take a bit of that momentum, a bit of that steam, because you are the lightweight champ in the carnage of the, in the cage, which is another yeah. Australian um, promotion, which you'll be fighting yeah. in a, a month later. How, how do you um, how do you juggle those two fight camps, so to speak? You know, how do you how do you keep motivated for one and keep focused on one when you know you've got another one coming up as well? Yeah, bro, it's definitely tough. I've uh, done it before. I've, I fought in Australia and then fought back here in two weeks at, apart at lightweight. So yep. I've made that cut two times in or two weeks, 14 days apart, which um, yeah, isn't nice. Bro. This time I've got about three weeks, so it's, it's another week up my sleeve. So training-wise, after this fight, I'll have to get back into it. But um, I have to stay fresh, not overtrain. Like, I fight better when I'm fresh and not overtrain. Sure. Um, I've got to maintain my peak fitness, which is I think it lasts for about three weeks. So um. I can't get burnt. I can't get burned out. Otherwise, I'll go into the next fight flat and struggle to make the weight again. So keep the weight down, train smart, eat good nutritious food to keep the, the body strong, and then do it all again, bro. Two wins in three weeks would be uh, be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, when you say your your peak is for three weeks, is that something that's you've you've come to learn, or is that like a, a rule in uh, fight sports or in, in athletes in general? Um, just something I mean, but, um, Dan Hooker told me he's going to hear that. Uh, yes, three weeks is what you can sort of maintain. So um, yep. sort of start with that um that idea. So I'm always training, you know, sparring twice a week, wrestling and jitsing all week, and doing martial conditioning twice a week. So when I have a fight, all I really do is add in a bit of conditioning and a bit of specific sparring, and then um, it might be a bit much, but yeah, I'm always training like 80%. So um, when I have a fight, it's just putting another 10, 15% in. Of specific work, and then I'm I'm good to go. So I don't have to do a, you know, like an, an eight week camp where I'm building up from the ground up. I'm I'm already pretty good to go. So um, it's just fine tuning and staying fresh for me, bro. Nice, nice. I'll try and change your um, put some nice things in your mind while you're doing this weight cut. When you win these two fights coming up in the next month and or in the next three weeks, um, Say you won some uh, Conor McGregor money or, or Nick Diaz money. Where where would you like to go on holiday if you were making the the big dollars? What what kind of um, what kind of money would you spend on a holiday like that? Yeah, bro, I definitely have to go train somewhere where there's um, a good gym, get some uh, some hookups or some recommendations to getting into a big show. So that would be a that would be a good idea. Um, yeah, probably uh, have to go to the stage just or or something and do some training and uh, have a holiday as well. But uh, if I want some, some Diaz money, bro, I'd be uh, buying a house, cash money, and buying my own gym or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like how you the first thing on your mind is more training. That's that's obviously the mind of a fighter. Like, you're not the first thing is like, yeah, Vegas, bloody cocktails all night or, <laughs> or, or you know, Ibiza or something like that. It was the first thing on your mind was more training. Which I, I talked to Ev the other day. We know um, Dan's over training. You know those both those guys are overseas training. What kind of is there any camps that you always had in your mind? Oh, I'd love to you know pop in there if I get the opportunity and do some training with this guy or, or this guy specifically. Yeah, bro, I definitely have to go to um go to Tiger and train with Dan and the boys there. Like the key yep. connection there, so yep. uh, breaks down the barriers straight away. Um, they get some, they crucially get some good Eastern European guys coming through and for the wrestling and that, and obviously all the good the Thai guys for the for the striking, so it's a good place. But uh, yeah, you're probably somewhere in the States with um, a good wrestling program, good MMA program, like sure. Alliance or Jackson or something like that, bro. Where sure. these, um, some good lightweights go feed off them and let them beat me up and just like Dragon Ball Z, get better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe um, I think... Where does Ray Sefu train? He trains in Las Vegas. I think he's a striking coach there. Is it eight? It's yeah. not ATT. It's what is it? Um, Extreme Couture. Ray. Pardon? Extreme Couture. Oh yeah, Extreme Couture. Maybe you could go over there and then you go. Um, you know, Uncle Ray. You know, maybe you can put me on one of your World Series of Fighting cards. Yeah, bro, that would be uh, that'd be sick. Eh? I'd love to fight on his show. Um, but uh, it's probably a good idea, bro. Go and. Uh... Let my my coach Wayne Vega know that I'm going over, and he can get the uh, the league connection going, and yeah, the cast over there, and maybe you even know something might happen and get a get a fight in the series. Yeah, that would be good. We we'll, should be. Uh, I don't know how much um, networking's going on. Obviously, I have no idea, but I mean, it, 
there must be a lot of coaches here know Ray personally. They're, I've I've been waiting for some Kiwis to get on those World Series, but it doesn't seem to happen yet. Yeah, bro. Um, there was talk about um you boys getting on there. Um, and with the Kiwi connection, like uh, most of the the top New Zealand MMA and kickboxing gyms have a, a league guard connection. So um, yeah, if you're open to training with Wayne or any of the league guard affiliate coaches, um, you're gonna have some good striking and a good MMA game. Sure. Too. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of other promotions, oh, other than the UFC, which I usually talking about, um, the Bellator has signed Rory McDonald today, which which is quite huge news. Uh, I also heard rumours that they'd offered Cowboy Cerrone three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a fight. Um, yeah, it's it's all good news, and it can all work in a reverse manner where the UFC, um, you know, matches. Or it just it just drives it up, you know. You we see with Connor and Diaz the price there. Diaz got twelve million dollars apparently. Um, is this an exciting time for for someone like you? You know, looking to get in the big leagues where you just see that the, the growth is just is just it's just exploding. Well, the growth is getting big, eh? Like it's cool to see what Connor's achieved in the last three years. Like I remember watching him. Before he got signed, I probably sound like a, an OG fan, but I remember when he got signed, I watched his um, Cage Warriors fights and um, yep. he was stoning guys. And I remember I, I had a fight in Whakatane on Greg Horror Show. And then that morning, me and my jiu coach, Forrest Gilbert, watched him fight Marcus Brimage in the, um, the card in, was it, in uh, Gustin's home country, I think, Sweden, maybe. Oh, yeah. Like uh, four in the morning or something. And um, yeah, he stoned him, eh? And then I was like, man, this guy's awesome. Yep. But, um, and in that short time, he's gone from yeah being on the dole to um, like getting boxing money, eh? Like it's it's crazy. So um, if he can do it, you know, it can be done. Yeah, and and it's, it's a pretty it, tough. Deal. Like you've got to get in, and if it's if this is your primary source of income, fighting, you have to get in and make your money while you're young and fit, and get out and move on because it's a it's a tough sport, eh? Yeah, like they say, the window is is short and always closing. I mean, Connor says it himself. He's in it for the money and then he's out. Um, that, it's that mental attitude, do you think, is his possibly his um, strongest attribute to, to his success? You know, he has the skills also, but but without that mental, you know, um, force pushing him forward, do you think he would be as successful as he is? Yeah, well, I think a lot of the fights he's, obviously he's got the skill, but the fights he's won, he's managed to get in his opponent's head and make them fight, not their usual... Um, skill set like um he made jose russian and you know jose's done it to everyone else and then he did it to jose which is crazy um the other brazilian brando and um yep. dustin poirier those guys are good that's good fighters eh? that he got in their head got them angry made them swing too hard and um he's a, he's a very good counter striker so they fell right into his game plan so he's got that um that mental warfare um locked down i reckon eh? yeah yeah he does i saw um dustin actually admitted it. Took about a month later he said I didn't even realise how, how far in my head that um Connor was until until like weeks after the fight where he realised, you know, oh shit, because he was still thinking about him in a negative in a negative light. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah bro. Um this week uh on the UFC um on Sunday will be Meyer and Carlos uh, Damian Meyer and Carlos Condit. Um <laughs> Striker versus grappler, BJJ versus kickboxing. I guess uh, predominantly, how do you see that fight going down? Yeah, bro, it's a good fight. I um I really rate Maya. I think his jiu-jitsu is um the best in the UFC ever. And his his half guard and, and passing game and back control game is um is uh, awesome. Once he gets you back and gets you going, um, you're in his world. Yeah. Um, Condit's striking is obviously superior. He's probably a better athlete, good wrestling, and he's got some. I call it like good explosive jitsu, eh? like yes. Well, um, but I think yeah, Maya win that uh win that jitsu battle. So Connor's got to keep it on the feet with that uh flying knees and spinning attacks and keep um keep Maya guessing and not letting him get a hold of like a single or a back. And we'll be um be able to keep him out. Sure. Do you think if say Maya gets past Condit, gets gets the title shot, gets the title, do you think that's a good thing for that division or? For the sport in general to have that boring, 
not boring to to BJJ uh, enthusiasts for sure, but that boring fighter at the top of the pile. Yeah, bro. I think um, I think anyone else, I'm sure, would be streaky. Probably wasn't as long when he got the title shot, just to be so exciting and explosive. But um, from a fight skills point of view, like he deserves a shot, eh? And if he went, if he beats Condit, um, definitely be right in there, eh? And um, it'd be interesting to see him fight Woodby because Woodby's uh, got that explosive striking and solid wrestling. So yeah, um, might have to test his jiu-jitsu for sure. Yeah. And yeah. If, he, if he got the belt, yeah, it'd be cool. Um, I think people would uh. Probably wouldn't fear him as much as a Woodley or a Lawler, but um, just as dangerous in his own way. What did you think of that Woodley Lawler fight? Uh, just out of nowhere, did you see that? Yeah, I bet those guys. They said they didn't. They probably sparred together, eh? And I think they must have played on each other's minds. Like maybe Lawler had it on him, or Woodley had it on him in sparring, or whatever, or just um. Woodley's um just so explosive and he's probably not the not the guy you can play um play in the pocket and trade with like the other guys Lula's fought. Yep. And it's maybe Lula's accumulation of his his last three fights have been absolute wars, eh? Like back and forth getting getting rock rocking the other guy. So that's gotta take it out of your out of your um your tank, eh? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, he's been in a few wars and he looked tentative and then Woodley just jumped on him. Um but another couple of questions before I let you go, man. How is um Training at the moment at uh, Canterbury Fight Centre. I think uh, James Tahoon is in town at the moment. I think he might be coming down to either Strike Force or Canterbury Fight Centre, do some seminars. Um, what's going on down there at the moment? Yeah, bro, we got um, Jamie coming down next Wednesday, so that's going to be awesome. Eh? Another chance to train with him and learn off him. Pick his brain. He's got a lot of experience and he's um, one of New Zealand's top, top fighting exports, eh? so. Yeah, getting a chance to be around him will be awesome. Um, as for the gym, bro, it's going mean. Um, heaps of strong tie fighters and jiu-jitsu guys there. To, lots of guys my way to train with and push me. Everyone's always got fights lined up, so it's um, the gym's busy and it's pumping, eh? Mean. Mean, bro. And um, there's a couple other Kiwis fighting on that card with you on Saturday. Um, who should we be looking out for? Yeah, bro. Um, Brogan versus that Badata will be a pretty badass fight. I think the badass, um... Yeah, he's like the Cajun Muay Thai champ. And Brogan, Brogan's a beast, so um, it's going to be a good fight. Um, my teammate, Fergus Tonka, had to pull out with an injury, um, an injury of his back, so he, he wasn't able to fight. But um, okay. one of John Vaki's brothers fighting on there, so it'll be uh, cool to see him throw down too. Cool, man. And the main event, the Jackal, he needs a, he needs a good win, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, your boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he, he can't seem to shake that... Um, Ben win uh, loss. I mean, it's just impossible. Everyone, that's the first thing most people think of. Uh, he's been training at uh, Team Alpha Male. Um, I'm wishing him all the best, man. He, he can't take that much negativity for too long, I don't think. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that fight definitely got him some global recognition, even though it was impossible with um, him not to know who he is, eh? So, yep. yeah, he's, he's well known. So, if he gets a couple of good wins under his belt, you know, he can go, go places too, eh? Could, he could. The guy's yeah. fighting Sava is um pretty pretty good, eh? Like he's a black belt, but I think he's I'm pretty sure he's got some unorthodox awkward striking as well. So um he can stay on the feet with um Jules as well and probably um obviously on the floor he's got he's got the advantage. So um I think Gustavo is yeah, it's in his court that fight for sure. Me. And um so last question, man, we we want to watch your fight. I'll I'll jump on the website later on, but can we stream that in New Zealand? Yeah, bro. There's a live stream. I'll um, I'll chuck it up on my page and that, and um, share it around, and I'll, I'll tag you fellas in the post too, bro. So awesome. you can um, pump it out too. Yeah. Oh wow. One more brace. The last brace was was awesome. We we uh we were watching it. Um, what did you think of it? Like, obviously they've been here before, but this one was on Fight Pass. What what did you think of that? Yeah, bro, it was awesome. Um, I think last time we spoke, we talked about the MMA scene in New Zealand being a bit quiet. And um, yep. the brace was, what, like 10 weeks ago? And I've already got another one uh, five weeks, so it's nice and regular. Um, and being on Fight Pass is huge. Like, people, important people are going to walk and see you fight, which is uh, awesome. Yep. And, um, yeah, like, they bring over Aussies to the boys to fight. Um, so it, it's had 43 shows. It's been number 43, so it's... um. You know, the show's got some weight. It's not just uh, any, any old show. Um, 
I think New Zealand MMA scene is awesome because it's, you know, you can fight on that show three times a year in New Zealand and it's going to be on Fight Pass. So that's, yeah, bro. So, it was it was great. Was cool. All yeah, all three of us, uh, me, Lucas, and JV was we was all watching it, man. We had beers. We were, like talking to each other and just seeing all the Kiwi boys doing well. You know, got us excited to watch the card, and it made it easy yeah. to watch. You know, because not every not every card in New Zealand streamed. Obviously, well, I mean, none, none yeah. of them are really. It was good. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. It's cool. Um, cool to see that. Yeah, yeah, it was really good to see that, bro. And I'll um I'll let you go, man. I'll let you um get out your FPOS card and scrape the last yeah, um grams of sweat off. I hope your weight cut goes really well, man. All the best with the fight, obviously. Thanks for your time. Um, and uh, I I'll, I'll be watching. Cheers, bro. Thanks, Edmund. You wanna appreciate the heaps. No worries, bro. All the best. Take his head off. Thanks, bro. All right, chair, bro. Oh, thanks. Thanks for doing that twice. <laughs> ah, fuck. Uh, amateur. Amateur. All right. Cheers, bro. Uh, I'll let you get your rest, man. Thanks for that, eh? I'll probably... Yeah, man. Thanks for that, bro. Later. Kia ora, Anaru here for Combat Sports New Zealand. I've just finished uh, my interview with Kieran, the Stone Carter Joblin. Uh, it was it was a good interview where we, we caught him in the bathtub halfway through his weight cut. Um, so we got a bit of insight onto, onto how he's cutting his weight, finishing up his weight cut, ready for his fight on XFC 27 on Saturday. Um, he's also preparing to defend his lightweight title at Carnage in the Cage um, a couple of weeks after this. So we, so we talk about the preparation of keeping him uh, fight fit, you know, with with two fights in, in, in under a month. Um, we got his predictions on the next UFC. We got his got his take on UFC 202. We got his take on UFC money and how he'd spend that money once he gets there and he and he starts making it. Um, shout outs to Kieran and and all his team at Strikeforce and Canterbury Fight Centre. Um, thanks for your time, Kieran, and I hope everyone enjoys the interview. Cheers.